accessories are kind of um, my enjoyment. Um, I figured out early on in reenacting that it was really kind of, you know, fun to dress up. But then what do I do with my hands? And um, why does the picture look so much better than I do? And, you know, it took about a hot minute to decide that accessories um, make um, the look more full. And anytime you look at a portrait or a fresco, you can see all of the lovely ladies and all of their wonderful accessories. So flag fans and flags in general, um, really interested me on um, because I'm kind of a crafty person. Everyone in my family is a maker of some type. Um, my, my, all the men in my family are woodworkers and make beautiful things. And so I wanted to kind of tap into that um, skill set and make some fun things. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, press the button on this. Okay, so we, uh, the, the one thing I want to start with is showing you a little background on the flag fan. On the right hand side, we're looking at a wood cut um, from Pietro pa Paolo Tozzi. Um, talks about the discomforts of mankind without a fan in the hand in the summer. Um, this is an advertisement. There were advertisements back in the day. So the image on the left shows an outdoor lawn party where no one has a fan. Bugs are swarming around, people are trying to have conversations, they're trying to eat, and they're being annoyed by flies. And so in the image on the right, um, a fan seller, a ventuole, um, arrives at the party and he starts to sell fans and now everyone is happy because they all have a fan and all the flies are gone. People, it's a fly swatter, among other things. And so there are lots of writings about what exactly a flag fan is. One of the most popular um, writings that we look at is the Diary of Coriac. He was a young gentleman on his world tour, happened to bounce through Northern Italy, and he saw these flag fans on his tour and he made a note about it. Like they're, you know, they're just a great little piece of finery and they're made out of all these different things and they're so colorful and everybody seems to have one. Um, and so that's one of the most cited items that we look at. Um, I have another citation on the screen from Momenti, who was a researcher um, and in the early 1900s, and he notes that it consisted of a short stick with a square flag-shaped piece of embroidered paper or some other stuff. Then he goes on to talk about later what the other things it was made of. He specifically says Verano lace. And he cites a um, lace collector in this knowledge, and I'll share the name of that lace collector with you later, um, as well as where you can see that collection. Um, and then he talks about what the sticks were made out of. The sticks were made out of ivory, tortoiseshell, precious metals. They were engraved, they were encrusted. In other words, as all Italian women do, they like to step it up. If I can glue something on it, if I can decorate it, if I can pay somebody to make it more fancy, I will. So the flag fan really has no rules. Do it. And uh, that leads me to my next caveat. Rules are made for lesser mortals. And, and usually in Italy, sumptuary laws were about protecting people from themselves. And so here we have on the left, um, some excerpts from a, um, state, from a sumptuary law, um, the Contratio di Nose, and I've translated it for you on the left. Um, the primary users of flag fans were women, and that sumptuary law 
sought to prohibit them from purchasing fans with gold and silver handles covered in pearls and jewels, allowing the use of plain fans only with simple drawings or stamped black or white without a carved handle in gold or silver. So what do you think the women liked most? Fans that were gold, silver, covered in jewels, with pearls, any kind of finery they could attach to it. And so from this point on, we're gonna try, I'm gonna try to show you some of those examples. Um, I have visited um, all of the major use museums in Northern um, Italy. And I've been to France and England and another, I was supposed to go to the Prado this month and look at some of their collections. And so um, I'm working on creating a series about the different types of fans um, from the period. So this is just some of my meanderings through that research. If you uh, change to the next slide, we don't see it. We're still on the caveat slide. What? This cannot happen. All right, let me figure out how do I fix that. I can see the next step. So I'm on a slide that says where to look for fans. Yeah. Everybody see that? I can yes. see that. If you don't see that, refresh your screen. Sometimes, um, sometimes it's uh, your your system's lagging says the mundanely instructional technologist. <laughs> okay, so where do I look for fans? Well, there are a number of fan museums across Europe. There's a very prominent one in London. Um, and you can literally Google London Fan Museum and it will come up. Um, Pinterest collections, there's a growing body of Pinterest collections. The Fan Museum even has its own Pinterest collection. Diaries, inventories, memoirs, commonplace books, and ambicorium. Who are familiar with ambicorium? Just wave. If you're not familiar, an ambicorium is a drawing book collected by travelers. Think of it as the collection of postcards that you would collect when you go on your travels. So every time they would stop somewhere, they would collect those drawings, they would get a local artist to draw a drawing of friends or places or things. So we have a lot of drawings of fans because of Amicorium. And uh, do enjoy um, do enjoy looking that up. Um, I, I'm fascinated by those books. Uh, major museum collections often mislabel fans and fan parts in their collection. And that's what I have found during my travels. Sometimes they're listed as not a fan, but a woodcut, um, a screen, a fly swatter, random unknown accessory, and um, some other names as well, like um, Banderola, Bandereri, um, because of the way it was constructed. And I'll talk about that as well. So when you're doing your research, um, the librarian says, make sure you're using a randomized key ser keyword search selection. Um, and you're going to find more. Don't just look for flag fan. Don't just look for key fan. Um, key and, um, um, weather vane, those are, those are names that were applied during the Victorian era. So you're not going to find a lot before that because of how those names were applied. Okay, so here's a nice woodcut of our Ventole, our fan seller. And you can see that this was, you know, pretty commonplace activity. Uh, um, there are a number of different flag fan um, sellers who were associated with printing shops. Printing shops would print them out, they would give them to the flag seller, he would glue them on a stick, and then he would roam the neighborhood with these fans. That's why we don't have a lot of ex extant examples, because they were a commonplace street sold item. Um, 
They were very, the more expensive kinds were given as gifts. Um, sometimes they had messages on the blade or key. Um, those messages could be signs of unity or patriotism like local heraldry. They could also be dirty jokes, poems, um, body scenes like the Karma Sutra scenes, um, just whatever they wanted to put on a fan that was entertaining. During carnival, those scenes would be, you know, like I said, um, you know, amore scenes. And so just about anything would go. In fact, there were even print shops started to print them for the lower classes to buy the print and paint themselves as a home activity which is really fun. And I'll show you an example of one of those prints. Okay, so the most common type of fan um, that we can still find laying around is the, actually the woven fan. Um, and um, in the Abrugia region of um, Italy, you can still see places that make these fans just like this today. Um, and um, there are actually, there are a couple of convents in that area as well that sell them with regularity. Um, I haven't seen them selling them online, but I have seen them being sold in person. Um, and so they're usually um, platted grasses from the marshes. The Abrugia region is a mar marshland area. And so they're using what was locally found to create those. Um, they're most often carried by men, wooden handle with um, carved caps on the ends. Um, in the lower right hand corner, you can see my very first humble and weak attempt at making a woven fan out of some grass items. Um, I went down to the, the garden center, picked up some raffia and tried to see what I could do. What I notice in most of the extant examples I see in drawings and extant examples, the weave is on a diagonal. So um, I've actually contacted a weaver about teaching me how to do that um, diagonal weave. And I'm doing some research on the background of that recently found a book that has descriptions of that. I'm going to show you. My book is called Un Mondo di Etrecchia Eventuale. And so it has descriptions of that different type of um, weavings. Yes, I'll share the, the resources I have with you at the end. So woven fans most often carried by men, especially priests, um, and uh, around the house. So this is my, what you might have sitting next to your chair at home, just to deal with the flies, kill a bug, whatever. Okay, cloth. Easily the most popular for middle and upper class women. Um, embroidered woven tapestry with lace or bead trimmings. Um, there are two extant examples here as well as two portraiture. The portrait on the very um, left of your screen is easily one of the most popular. Um, it's meant to be a wedding photo of the artist's daughter. It's painted like eight years after her wedding. So, okay, whatever. Um, the fan there has a particular name and it, it's called, you know, it translates white bridal fan. Okay, so white with a, with a gold painted um, stick or in carved stick um, with some um, Venetian lace around the edge. Um, the tapestry fans I think are pretty cool, like the one on the right hand side of this extant example, see how short the stick is. Um, I've thought about um, ordering some of those um, mouse pads, the woven mouse pads that look like miniature carpets and putting a couple of those together and making a fan out of that. I'll let you know how that goes. I'll post pictures of that when I get those. But um, just pieces of woven tapestry. Um, and, you know, and of course, you know, women were doing those kind of small pieces of weaving at home. So they would probably make that at home. 
All right, cloth that is beaded. So here are some examples from one of my um, classes on making fans. So these are examples made by people in the class, um, taking fabrics and putting pearls and beads on them. The example on the right, everybody, you're gonna love this. The example on the right, um, the lady went to Pier One and bought a beaded pillow to take the fabric off the pillow because it had the jewels and the beading that she wanted and the design she wanted. So she just stripped it off the pillow. I loved it. So if you don't like to bead, there you go. There's an opportunity. <laughs> but um, these designs, the, the design, all of these designs mimic um, period examples. All right, Burano Lace. So some of you may, these are all from the collection of um, Alfred Lashore. He was a Victorian era lace collector. Please do look him up, you'll get his site, uh, some information about him. And so um, if you look at these designs for a while, the one on the red fabric comes from um, museum in Austria. And a lot of people thought that that was a paper cut. And it's actually from his collection of um, Burano lace. And it's quite yellowed. The other two examples are not yellowed. The one on the lower has its original stick. And you can see that the lace is, a, is the edge of the lace has a small stick that's then tied at the top and the bottom to the flag fan handle. That's pretty interesting how that's attached. And I, I think these are really beautiful. Um, these, these lace examples, there are many um, lace making books that still provide the key as a, um, as a practice example. They don't know it's for a, a fan, but they do provide that example. All right, so now on to paper fans. The picture on the right hand side of this screen is from a fresco in Rome on the side of a printer shop. And the thing that I loved about this fresco, other than it being a period fresco, that it shows a flag fan and a folded duckbill fan together. So, yes, they existed at the same time and period. Okay, so paper designs. One of the most popular was the lozenge design. Big diamond in the center with square decorations around it. And this was usually painted. Often in the center lozenge would be some type of heraldic design. And uh, two extant drawings there of ladies with lozenge design paper fans. The, the key size um, is usually either four by four or four by six. Here's an example of a woodcut design. Um, the woodcut on the left was um, a very popular print um, in Venice to put on a paper fan. You would go by the print shop, buy the print, and then and attach it to your own stick. And we can see a lady on the right with one of those um, paper fans with a figure on it. Um, some figures from plays, um, scenes where plays were very popular to put on flag fans. So it was, again, an advertisement. If the play was about to come out, then yes, the flag fan, the printers would print those to put on flag fans. Here is a painted amorous scene on a flag fan. This is at the Flag Museum in London. And you can see that the fan had some fringe and that it is folded over. There's a different scene on the other side of the flag. And yes, it's also an amorous scene as well. And the handle is um, ivory, a carved ivory, a beautiful handle on that flag. 
Um, I have a question from, yeah. uh, I think it was about the uh, lace bands where they starched and yeah. how did they fasten them onto the main stick? Well, sometimes the lace has a stiffening stick along the edge of the lace and then that stiffening stick is tied to the flag handle. And then sometimes a band of linen is along the side of the lace and then it's nailed to the flag handle. The lace would have been dipped several times in some starch or stiffening um, resin to make it, to make it, you know, strong so it wouldn't bend and um so you have the the options of the stick on the side or the linen i prefer when i'm making the fans i prefer the linen and then tacking um that linen strip to the side of the stick it's stronger and the um key lasts longer the key lasts longer and I'll show you those construction examples in just a second when I get through the different designs. All right. Um, prints that you could color yourself were very popular. Very, very popular. Women wanted to, you know, these were activities at home for, for young girls and young women um, sitting around the house. They could paint their own little fans, um, and little, crafty activity here's an example of a painted a key that would could be painted and um an, a drawing of one of those painted keys rebus puzzles these were also printed and put on flag fans um rebus puzzles uh, italians love puzzles and games they loved puzzles and games and the rebus puzzle a rebus puzzle is pictures that when you sound out the pictures, they make up words, and then there's a riddle in that that you solve. So these are two print examples from the period. Um, and these are all over Pinterest. If you type in Rebus on Pinterest, you'll get hordes and hordes of them. Okay, so here's a printed scene for home painting. And this is one that, um, I, I'm doing for myself because I just I just like it for I'm going to use it for Halloween. It looks fun. Um, here's a reference 1640 published by the Vacari brothers in Rome. Um, it lists the the inventory lists um, 14 pieces of bizarre and whimsical scenes to make fans. Um, so sometimes instead of being called a fan a ventarole or ventuolo it might have just been called um a capricci et bizarri so it would not even say fan at all so sometimes if you're looking for these scenes you're going to use those words in a keyword search instead of um, using ventarole so this would have been printed and then they would have just been glued on opposite sides Here's another one. This was printed a full sheet. And you see where the middle, where the designs meet, it would have been folded there. And then the other edge would have, they would have put a band of linen and attached it to the flag fan. So um, this, these, this is um, from a woodcut from Milan um, and it's at the Castello Sports sports of the castle in milan i didn't get to see it in person though because that floor was closed the last time i went there and i hate that very frustrating um but i love the the scenes the cupid the sharing the heart their hearts are chained together okay so another type is the paper cut um this is my this is my favorite type um, paper cutting was an activity that was very popular across um, Europe. Um, Catherine de' Medici has a, um, a uh, book of hours that has paper cuts, um, paper cut manuscript. Um, and you can see that on Pinterest as well if you've never looked at it. But um, this was a period design 
and um, I created this for an art side. But you, if you look at the center picture, you can see the strip of linen attached to the paper and then nailed into the flag handle. This was a popular way of attachment. Um, and I like this type of attachment because if you break the flag handle, like I've broken this flag handle like three times um, because of kids, and uh, then you can just remove it and attach it to a new handle. Like I've attached that fan to a new handle like a dozen times. Um, so uh, in between the two layers of the cut paper is blue silk um, to give the fan more contrast. Um, and that was a uh, typical and um, there are some manuscripts in Spain that show um, blue silk in between pages of cut paper. So flag handles, flag handles. Um, if I'm gonna make mass produced flag handles, I'm just gonna get some sticks, some stout, some dowel sticks from Joann's that come in packs of 25. I also like to use um, spindles that are often used for um, rocking chairs. Yes, in the back of rocking chairs, they come pre-cut. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my, my screen for a second to see some of the examples that I have. Everybody see me again? Okay, so I have a nice big bucket of um, flag handles. Why don't I see me? Let's see, so I can make sure I'm showing you. All right, so this was the dowel that has a sculpted in and a straight in. And I ordered about 20 of these from a wood turner. And he basically charged me about $6 a piece for these. And they are the, you know, 15 inches long. That was pretty much the standard length for flag handles, 15 inches long. Um, what I use most often on the ends are dowel caps. And dowel caps can be purchased, you know, six or eight a pack at any of the craft stores for a couple of dollars a piece. They come in all different designs. Designs, just about any design that you could think of. If you go to um, thrift stores or antique stores, you can find them as carved in ivory, different metal types, um, just about anything you would want to create with those. Um, so what if I don't have, and here's a pack of those dowel rods that I use when I'm mass producing fans. Um, and yeah, the pack's like, couple dollars, couple dollars. So what if I would like to melt a fan um, handle? I gave you an example, Bethany Dickley. She's using, um, Bickley, she's using a paper mache method to create Harry Potter wands, but I've recently had a student create a flat handle with using this mache putty paste method. Um, and so I think that's also, let me share my screen again so you can see that again. What's like the diameter for the stick? Yeah, the diameter for the stick. Um, if I'm doing a, um, if I'm mass producing, for parties and and friends or whatnot, I use a fairly thin stick, maybe only two millimeters, three millimeters diameter. Um, my standard, my standard stick, the diameter at the fan blade in is usually um, four millimeters, and I I like the handle in to be about eight millimeters at its widest. Um, 
And and that and I would say it's it's a personal choice. How rough are you going to be with your fan? Um, no, I don't want to carry around a baseball bat, but um, <laughs> but uh, you know some people are a little bit more rough with their accessories than other. I'm I'm pretty rough with my accessories, so I I prefer um, uh, you know most of them are cut from pine the ones that you can buy pretty cheaply pine or balsam wood or some you know and those are not very strong i i find to be oak or um you know walnut because they're they're tougher they're just tougher and i and like i said i'm very rough with my accessories all right so here's that fan and basically the pieces of putting it together um, the two paper cuts, the piece of silk, and the strip of linen that I sewed on one side, and then nailing it to the fan blade. I used um, some very, very tiny finishing nails that are used in um, finishing for um, upholstery design. So they're, they're upholstery tacks, and they're super tiny. Um, anything bigger will split the fan handle and you'll be very disappointed. So here's that silk fan. And yes, inside the silk fan is a blade of cardboard. Um, and there are a number of craft texts from um, the period that talk about the making of cardboard as a stiffener. And so I use cardboard inside. This fan is made bandoloro style, meaning the fabric is folded over the handle. So the fabric is folded over the handle. And if you look at the bottom picture, it's stitched along the handle to create strength and stiffness. So yeah, if I break this fan handle, I'm gonna have to take the fan all apart to um, try to put a new handle in it. And I hope not, hope not. Um, in this, in this particular, um, on this particular fan, I found some, um, some metal findings that you would like nail onto leather. You pound them into leather for decorating leather. And uh, I used those on this fan as decoration. They're tiny little leaves. I thought they were cool. Um, here are some painted fans um, with beading. And uh, the fan on the right hand side is actually craft paper over, um, over cardboard. Not everybody's a painter, a drawer, a designer, and uh, you know, all the craft shops make wonderful craft papers and you can get pretty much any design that you like. Um, why paper over paint, uh, why craft paper? Well, it's water resistant. And if you're outdoors, if you spill some water on a painted fan, it might be gone. So the craft paper, you know, provides some durability. All right, mass production. Um, when I had my vigil, I made these fans, um, and I, literally hundreds of them, um, to give away to people who visited me. And this is kind of the idea of what they probably would have done for street festivals and things like that during the period. They would have printed some fans, put it on a cheap stick, passed them out to the masses. And um, these designs, I just, I found the designs online. I liked them. They were tile designs. And uh, so I just printed them cardstock. I folded them over the stick. That's bandolero style, banderola style, folded over the stick. And, um, and put, you know, glued in between the two layers. Um, and, you know, I have quite a collection of, of those still. I, I had planned to give the lot of them to Giada to hand out um, at um, the Renaissance Village this year for Gulf War, but that didn't happen. So sorry, everybody. <laughs> Maybe next year. So um, yeah, so those, um, again, this is the size, this is that 
four by four size that would have been most popular um, at the time for the for the simplest fan for the simplest fan let me say that all right so i periodically post designs and more information about fans on the website there's the website um, i'm going to stop sharing this screen i have things around me to share with you and let's look at the what kind of glue that's a good question what is a good okay so what kind of glue well in period they would have used fish glue now do we still have fish glue around us yes we do think of the glue that you you may have seen a brown glue with the rubber topped bottle the glue was like gelatinous and had a brown honey color that's fish glue uh, and why fish glue because once it dried it wouldn't melt if it got wet it wouldn't reconstitute if it that's the difference between elmer's glue yeah the rubber cement stuff exactly we think of it as rubber cement but that's fish glue um and uh using elmer's glue because the elmer's glue will recut it's wet and your fan comes apart um my url is franca de not weebly.com uh, so i have a collection of those simple paste fans and uh when you put that fish glue in between the layers it may be strong and these are you know simple sticks all different so this is that typical four by four um, blade size four by four blade size um, the decorative fan size that we most often like the blade size um, four by six so that think of it as the size of your hand or just enough coverage for your face that's the size stick length and nearly every extant example that we see is 15 inches long. Um, I've done a museum study of sticks links based on portraiture and they're either 15 inches long or 18 inches long if you're going for authenticity. Um, what else can, can I tell you? Actions now, any questions? to make the mass produce fans yes i'm using cardstock i'm using a thicker cardstock i had um i i went to state cardstock that they had and i gave them a drive and they printed out you know um, what i was looking for and that thicker paper you know a thicker cardboard-esque cheap to make paper would have been used in period i just i just took the easy route in that mass production <laughs> so what do you think other questions about the fans so i i've got to make sure i'm telling you everything i can tell you about them um again absolutely anything you want to make it out of I don't have any feathered examples, but there, there I found in writings about fan keys being covered with feathers, but I haven't found any pictures or extant examples of that type. Um, oh, the paper cutting, Nora. Um, I actually did that as a art side project. If you're interested in that, I can send you the document documentation and you could follow that for the paper cutting um, paper cutting was very popular um, for about a 70 year period across um, Europe and it's still very much a popular art form among Jewish communities today because you'll often find paper cuts of um, bridal contracts um, still today that was a very popular art form for them um and there's this whole hurry across um europe about the destroying of those bridal contracts as a way to get get jewish people to leave their homes but 
um, yeah, if you're if you're interested in that, I believe I have a few. Please send me a private message for any material or things that you're interested in, because I have books about all of these these topics. Um, the fan book about the woven materials is here. And um, again, I will post, I will be happy to post in the um, event site the names of all of these books. It's Un Mondo di Intrecchi Eventuoli. And this was, um, it was a museum publication. It was a museum publication. And uh, most of the most of the fan books that I have were museum publications. There is one about painting fans, and it is um, it's by um, Flory and Mary Caldwater Jones, and it's called A Book About Fans: The History of Fans and Fan Painting. And um, I got this one on Amazon, and it talks about how the fans were painted in period. You're muted. I can't hear you, babe. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, we we have a question. Um, which do you prefer? Oh, it keeps moving. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Which do you prefer, the folded over fans or the ones with the linen strip? Well, what's the difference? okay, folded over. If I'm going to make it out of cloth, I prefer the folded over because I don't have to cut the fabric. Less cutting longer fabric. So if I'm going to make it out of silk or something like that, I'm going to use the Bandoloro style, the fold over the stick. Um, if I can't help it, if the design will not, if the design will be disturbed feeling over the stick, well then I'll use the linen strip. The linen strip just allows you to change your fan handle as often as you like. And remember, everything to an Italian, every accessory would have been repurposeful. They would have used their accessories and their clothing as money. You know, how many times do you see women pawning off all their jewelry or their accessories? And then, oh yeah, make sure you go back and get my stuff back. So those were items that were pawnable because you know they would be valuable we have a so both have yeah. a question from Ziata. how far outside the the netto would we see these um i don't know what particularly she's referring to but Giada, are you outside on? of italy and other countries well um i re the reason i was going to the prado and rather famous fan maker fan um in spain and so I was going to the Prado to see examples of that painter's work. Uh, and he was very specifically painting fans. And he would only paint, paint for three months a year. And he would paint as many as he could. He would sell them for the summer season. And then he would take the rest of the year off. So, right, right? Living the life, yo. But uh, so, you know, I was going to see a collection of that painter's works. So they they were seen in Italy, um, the uh, and Spain. Uh, there's a couple of references to them in England. They prefer the duck bill, the duck foot fan, the folding fan, um, and then also there are a couple of um, manuscripts um, that you can see in Germany, and those include the, they were not specifically of fans, but of the clothing of Italy, and the fans were, so they were very much aware of the fans there as well. Why, I, I just think it was so popular in Italy, because they were dealing with the heat wave, and they were dealing with bugs, and that's the way they were dealing with the bugs. Do I have a Facebook group um, that you can join? Um, yes, my Facebook name is Vandy Cassetti Donaldson, and my uh, Facebook group is called The Redotto of the Virtues and the Vices, and I post all new information in the Redotto first, R-I-D-O-T-T-O. -T -T 
P-O, Redoto of the Virtues and the Vices. So um, if you join the Redoto, you'll see releases of all my stuff before it hits anywhere else. And it's it's just a private group where it's it's Italian focused. I don't talk about SCA, I talk about Italian stuff. And I like to make that distinction so we don't have advertisements or sellers in that group. It's not a sale group. Um, it, the point is just to talk about research and share research and ask questions about research. Like, why isn't this working? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, Redoto. Um, and uh, again, Vandy, V-A-N-D-Y, Pacity Donaldson. I, I don't know very many Vandys in, on the planet. So there's a one other person in the SCA I know named Vandy. She lives in Canada and is a, art, is a glass artist. Follow her, really nice stuff. Um, paper cutting looks a lot like papal picado. Yes, it, yes, yes. It's, um, the papal picado is um, very similar. Again, it was, you know, it lasted longer in some countries and some cultures longer than others, but it, it, why did it have such a influence during the Renaissance for a time? Well, because of, um, you know, Jewish refugees. You know, you have an influx of Jewish refugees during the Renaissance, and they were servants and, and you know, settling in communities, and they brought their art forms with them. What about the relationship to African fans that were basket weave? Absolutely. Um, in the book from the museum about the weaving, um, they're, they're showing a direct correlation between the African weaves and the um, woven fans. Um, and I just, I haven't finished the article about that yet, but absolutely they're showing a direct um, relationship chip at um they are very hard to find but that one particular book talks about the woven fans in depth yeah the un mondo di entrecchi e vitoli yeah um yes uh, ottoman uh, the fans were the flag fan nora was very popular with the ottomans and so um their style well, there's much more intricate, the embroidery intricate, um, very much um, like the designs that um, we see in their clothing and um, and in architecture. They carry, remember, the, the Ottomans carried their designs across all art forms. So if they could embroider it, if they could paint it, if they could, you know, sculpt it, they did it. Oh, Giada put up my group link. Thank you. Thank you, Giada. Love you much. Yes. Um, I'll tell you all the story sometime about the virtues and the vices. <laughs> all the good stuff. Um, where can we find examples of the prints used for fans? What is the difference between the blade and key fans? I don't understand that part. Maybe you can elaborate on blade and key. What do you mean by difference between blade and key fans? Uh, oh, just the terms? Nothing. That's just, uh, like I said, the term key, a, um, a, a description applied during the Victorian era because the fan held on its side looked like a key. Okay, yeah. That was just a term applied during the Victorian era. Blade, again, um, some people thought it looked like a, a butcher cleaver. So use words from our, our common lexicon to to describe things that are no um linguistically you'll see that in every era that we apply the terms that we use now to things that came in the past for example we all refer to the things that we're wearing right now as a dress they would not have called a dress a dress during the period we know it had very many other names 
So same thing with the terms for fan. The most common um, terms for um, the, the flag fan was ventuolo, banduola, banduola. So that folded mm -hmm. over the stick fan, banduola. Um, and then there would be very many other names as well, depending on the region and how fans were constructed in that region. Um, where can I find prints used for fans? Uh, you're gonna love this. Um, there is an article on um, JSTOR. If you, if you do a search in JSTOR, the name of the article is called Print Prints for Fans. I know, right? Prints for fans. And it'll show you many of the prints um, that were used for fans, and it will tell you places that you can look for other prints for fans, which is ridiculous. I know. But that was the name of the article, and um, it was in a, you know, a Renaissance magazine, you know, I can't remember, what was it from the 40s or the 50s? Anyway, the name of the article was Prints for Fans. Mm -hmm. Crazy talk. Okay, so everybody's ready to go out and make themselves a fan to swat those flies, right? Everybody's ready. Ready to do that? Some of us are ready to change, so I need all the fans I can get. Need all the fans you can get? <laughs> Gianna, you're taking pictures, tripping me out a little bit. There's no movement there. <laughs> so um, the uh, the image file for the printed fans um, I will post on the Redodo today. If anybody would like to have that image file that has the different designs already collected and made. On the other side, it has a laurel um, because I gave them out at my vigil. But uh, yeah, some of them don't have that. Some of them just have double images on every side. So I will put those out there for y'all if y'all want to have be able to print your own fans. I used um, you know, craft scissors with the decorative design on the on the blade to create the pretty edges of the flag fans. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a very simple accessory to make, and um, it can add so much to your display. Miss Giada, if there are oh, when is my book coming out? I pray. Um, I'm an academic. And I finished my uh, doctorate in 2018, and I didn't expect my um, dissertation to attract as much attention as it did academically. So last year, I spent most of the year um, lecturing on tour and did not get to work on my book. But I am hoping that my book will be finished this summer. And it will be part of a series on the different types of fans. So there'll be one on flag fans, one on flabellum, um, one on feather fans. I, I expect to have six books in the series all about the different types of fans used during the Renaissance. There's my commercial. Sorry. <laughs> summer. Summer. And uh, I will probably um, give away some of my fan books in the Rodoto to the members of the Rodoto. Yes, Giada just went, yes. <laughs> okay, Giada, unless anybody else has a question. Okay, well, I, oh, okay, apparently there's someone on the sidewalk because you're not allowed to walk on the sidewalk in front of my house without my dog having a fit. Um, really? Yeah, mm. he's very protective. He's an Italian dog, so you know how they are. You yes, know how I do. I do. Thank you, Anor, for moderating this this class for me. Um, we're about to change over to our parasols class, I believe, and I think that that teacher is in the room. 
So if you guys have any more questions for Vandy, you can put them in the chat box and I will copy and paste them over to the Cadoro Salon. I've already put some questions there and I've put links to her, um, to her Facebook page, her Facebook group and her website there. So she's not going away, she's just going off the screen. She will still be around to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Fandy, for coming, Franca, for coming and, and, and talking with us. We really love this information. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure. I enjoyed it very much. I never get to spew about flag fans, so anytime. <laughs> <laughs>